Uh, you probably can't see it, but from what I can view on this video, <laughs> it's really interesting because those blades were going round at incredible speed. And uh, the video indicates a very slower speed. So obviously it's um, to do with the amount of uh, frames per second. But that's my Air Max and it's working really well. Uh, I've got a, uh, a three and a half meter pole hopefully to uh, exchange for the one that's up there ready to get it above the treetops. And then I know I'd have a, a lot more energy going into my batteries. But uh, that's a real plus because that's the first time I've actually seen the red light, the red LED light underneath the, uh, the actual turbine itself go on. And uh, which indicates that the batteries are being charged up. So, there's been other successes, and this is the uh, harvest time, but I have to say, there's also been lots of failures, and um, it's not just me who's has, had problems with the tomatoes, I mean, they were so diseased, it was unreal. I do get a one or two tomatoes per day, but for the 30 or 40 plants that I have here, it's really quite a sad story. And, I mean, here's an indication, it's just, didn't want to grow much taller than one foot. Um, the uh, Artemisa is uh, doing very well. This is the medicinal type. And um, that's that will sell seed and maybe it will be uh, too much of a pest next year. I'm going to have to be, going to have to be plucking out the Artemisa from in between the parsley, which also sells seeds, and uh, some of the charge now, chard, leaf chard, which is uh, self seeding. So that's the idea here. So I want to go over to a perennial system. Um, some of these broccolis I've been in here now for the second year. Um, certainly, if I show you uh, how much growth it's done in one year, or maybe one and a half years, I can expect something from those next year. But this is uh, the dry bed, which is why I have all these sort of like uh, drought resistant plants in here. Um, and I've selected them specifically for either pest deterrents or um, flower for the bees. And especially in the last couple of months, it's been a real drought for flower. But now the rosemary is coming out. So I'll just go along a bit and uh, what I thought were F1s, you see these flowers that are coming out here, they won't produce fruits, most of them. But then suddenly the first fruits started to come and I think I've counted seven or eight gourds and I'm afraid to say that I've been telling everyone they're melons, but they're not melons. They're gourds. And let's see if I can find you a decent sized one. Well, there's a small one, that's how they start off, you see. And it's come to that point in a year where they, the plants will die off and put all their energy in what fruits they have so they can create seed. And the other problem I have here also are rodents who eat them or butterfly. And you can see there's a, if I just go in there, there's another little gourd coming along but I want to show you something with a bit more size and decency about it like for instance here look at that here we are okay so that's a fast growing one which means basically um, the more established the plant is the bigger the leaf and the quicker the gourd grows but it's such a lot of energy to put into fruiting and there's a nice tomato but we'll leave that on there for a couple of more days before I pick that one to ripen on the on a sunny shelf. Um, it's such a lot of energy to put into a uh, flower and fruit set that uh, the plant will wait right to the end of its genetic cycle. And well, look at that. Looking at me there. Again, these peppers are really fast growing. I've been picking these quite young. Um, they're perennials uh, in the Mediterranean climate. Sometimes we don't get too much frost or like we did this uh, at the beginning of this year, we had loads of snow. So we go along and I've got these sunflowers and I put them in very late because I forgot I had saved the seed from last year, but I'll save the seed on those again. And uh, 
These are artichokes. Now I've had very little success with them, but the more they they uh, establish themselves, the, the more chance you'll get flour coming out on those as well. And that's what we eat here. We eat the flour, and it's a a, cul a culinary um, speciality, really. Had, I've got lots of chilies, and I've been making lots of curries. And this, I am now certain, is a turnip. And oh, is it a parsnip? <laughs> I think it's a parsnip, sorry. It's a parsnip, yeah. And I put, I put all, loads of those in, thinking that, uh, well, you know, I must have sown a seed on those because they all look the same. And lo and behold, uh, most of them have survived. They're quite drought resistant as well. And those were the uh, French packet of uh, parsnips which were donated to me, along with uh, parsley. And if I can show you some of that parsley, let's have a look. Which is now coming along. This is like French parsley. These are ancient varieties. And parsley is such a great mineral accumulator. And this is the established self seeded stuff. It grows pretty much as a drought resistant plant. You see? This parsley, I'm going to have some really nice carbohydrates. This, um, this winter and fortunately courgettes didn't do so well but if that can just produce a tiny little fruit before the end of November I'll save to see that because that again was an ancient variety donated to me and this is all self-seeded um, brassica and obviously brassicas don't come true so you'll get a variety of plants when you save the seed yourself, a variety of types. Um, so, what do I have here? Well, I've got another one of those. The uh, the origins that are are sort of coming along now. But here we are. We have another courgette, and that's at the ancient variety. So that's beginning to produce flower. Now I've seen these grow, um, like four times the size of that. And that's when they really want to produce nice size uh, fruits. So whether they produce a fruit this year, I, I don't know. But in terms of flour for for the bees, well, the, uh, the, the gourds really do put on a show, you know. And when times are tough, uh, you'll find the bee going into these flowers, even though it's probably got a very low nectar quality. Um, the other thing I want to say is if we can look at the corn on the cob this is all saved seed so I'm gonna this year I'm gonna select for the best cob um, the most vigorous because obviously you're saving seed and genetic variation occurs because of it um, they're so small and they, they just get like blitzed out by insects before you can even crop them um, for instance this one here this is a nice tall one so I should mark that one for seed saving so next year I know I'm going to have strong genetics or like this one here for instance okay don't eat all the cobs yourself and behind those I've, I've planted up the tomatoes as I say I haven't done really well and there's another very good example of what happened to most of them and some of these tomatoes were bought um, from a garden centre so it's quite possible that as plantettes, plantlets, sorry, um, they were um, uh, carriers of some form of disease. And uh, to find, to finally uh, conclude in this food tunnel, uh, this is the first year I'm planting, if I can step over, first year I'm planting uh, carrot. And I started these off in propagation trays which were floating in a water butt um, and as you can see I've had to transplant them meticulously each single plant and it's just worth the effort I mean it's for me living on a farm it's uh, one or two hours work at a time that's not a lot of time to spend transplanting carrots where most people would just sow them in situ and then thin them out so that's another plant which interestingly I want to see if it will um, uh, self-seed itself over the coming years if I leave a few of them in there 
and right at the end of the tunnel burying this uh, vine which hasn't done so well this year it's not produced any fruit and it's died back but that will be established now especially with all the watering that's going on around it with the aubergines the cows the artemisia the tomatoes uh, there's pepper there and if anyone recognizes it and this was another gift um, this is a uh, physalis cape gooseberry and that's a um, I'm hoping that's not the Chinese lanterns, which is the ornamental type, but this, the real Cape Gooseberry, which is a, a delicious berry hidden in a, a very sort of like um, thin vowel of a sheath. And uh, you'll see that maybe on another video another time. And uh, the uh, Bougainvillea has uh, struggled this year, but it's establishing, once it's established, it, it's, it's very difficult to, for it to die, but I suppose the, the real great success in this tunnel is this sage, and I've never grown sage so well before, and, and great for cooking, but um, I think, oh, I can just smell that coming out that whiff now, you know? I think that would be really good for making, what they call those, uh, those uh, incense uh, sticks where they bundle up a whole load of sage and then waft the air with it when the name doesn't come to me, but that's a, a, a nice Christmas present type idea. And I think uh, just to finally, finally end, um, I even got the audacity to plant uh, invasive weeds like grass. And I stick it in there, why? Because it fills a hole and it survives. And when everything else is dead around it, that's still going along. And that dies back also. <clears throat> and uh, one of the things I dug up from somewhere else, which can become a weed, is I think this is Himalayan balsam. So it's got a beautiful flower. Um, it's not a bee flower, but other insects like to go onto it. Uh, it's a weed though, and when that gets going, it's almost destructive. Well, time to uh, sign out, and I'll leave you with one final gift.